Yes, people, welcome to another episode of Beam. We are back, and today I'm with a very, very special guest, uh, former London Lions captain, two-time MVP of the BBL, Justin Robertson. How you doing, my guy? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, man, I appreciate you coming through. Appreciate you coming through. Um, so, look, I know you've done a few interviews and, and a few podcasts. Um, no secret that you're originally from Brixton. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, what's, what's some of your earliest memories of, of growing up in Brixton? Oh, good question. <laughs> um, to be honest, I think just um, just having fun, you know, as mm. a child um, from a Cowley estate. Um, yeah, just off Brixton Road. You know, I, I just remember growing up in a community that everyone knew everyone, you know, like this is before gentrification mm. came in. Um, you know, your friends are on the first floor, this floor, that floor, you, you know, your mum's friends are... You know, everyone was just kind of one and everyone kind of looked out for each other. The older kids looked out for the younger kids. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was all one, you know. I mean, obviously the area had its trials, um, you know. Back then there was a lot of crime, drugs, violence. But, you know, I never felt unsafe as a child, you know. Mm. I always felt protected, always felt like my community embraced me, you know. Um, yeah. So I think that's why I've always had love for where I'm from. Yeah, man, no, definitely. Um, now, you touched on it, obviously, Brixton, um, very different Brixton now compared to what it was when, you know, you was probably growing up. Um, a lot of gang culture, though, you know what I'm saying? So, um, like, at that point, you said you felt safe, but was there any, any times where you felt, like, influenced by the gang culture or, you know, pulled in at some point? Um, no, I mean, obviously, you know, you know, you grow up with people that are in the gang, friends are in the gang, um, but... I don't know, I feel like I was very fortunate to have friends that just always respected me for who I was, you know. Mm. I don't know what it was, I don't know, maybe it's my mum or my dad that kind of installed, I'm just not someone that can be swayed, you know, like I'm very headstrong, um, I'm not very impressionable, you know, um, and I just always kind of walked to my own beat, you know. I've, yeah. I've always not been known as Justin with the basketball, so wherever I'm going, I'm bouncing the ball, and I just kind of became known as that, that kid. Um, so yeah, like... Even up until teenagers, like all my friends would like, they're like boosting me up and bigging me up and like, oh, I'm pushing Jay, you know, he's going to America, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. you know, I was just very fortunate to have great friends, you know, mm. and I'm still friends with, you know, not even friends, but we're, we're all brothers, you know. You know, some of them are in jail, some are doing this, doing that, but they're still my family, you know. Um, so I was fortunate, very fortunate. Yeah, man, that's that's good, man. You, you know, when it's like similar when you get that footballers and basketball yeah. that coming from where we come from, they always want to make want you want you to make it out. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? They, they ain't really trying to Trust me. get me get you involved in 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 the rest of the stuff, man. But um, you know, growing up, as you said, teenage years. You know, I know when I was a teenager um, on the other side, Stockwell, there, there was things that that happened. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Did you encounter anything that was? Get me any violence or any crime that you thought that shit, man. I, I that ain't really for me. You know what I mean? Um, hmm. That's a that's a good question. <laughs> I mean, you know, like growing up, you know, you get into little situations. You know, you might be with a man that has punched up a man, or you know, he, he's robbed this man and stuff. Um, and obviously, you know, going to school, you know, schools have their little rivalries that kind of stem over into real life. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, there's been some situations, but. It always always been like a wake up call, like oh okay, like I, I need to fall back, or you know, instead of rolling with whoever, mm. I should be at training, or you know, I should be doing some revision. You know, it, there was for me there was always like a focus of, you know, doing things that I need to do to go to America. Yeah. So like yeah. in the age of ten, I'm I'm locked in. Like okay, cool, I need to get GCSEs, I need to get ten, A to C, maths, English, science. You know. Um, and again, you know, I, I had a, a community, Bricks and Top Cats, that installed that in me, you know, this guy on my t-shirt, Jimmy Rogers, he was like, he's everything to me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and he just kind of installed that tough love and that direction. And just, he, he helped me to navigate throughout life, you know, so yeah. I was fortunate, man. Yeah, man, big up Jimmy Rogers, yeah, man, yeah, do you know what I mean? Me. And, um, you know, before, I, I'm going to um, touch on Bricks and Top Cats, but before, I want to ask you about who introduced you to basketball because <laughs> normally it's a football you know yeah, UK yeah, is yeah, football yeah. you know me. what I mean so like how did you get into basketball um actually my older brother you know mm. um yeah randomly he bought me like a Michael Jordan poster I was about seven years old um for Christmas what was it Christmas or a birthday I'm not sure and 
it just kind of like sparked off something, you know. There was a post of him like going up for a dunk, and then you know after that I was buying like all the um, what's it called? The tapes? What were they called? Like VHR? Yeah, VHS. Yeah, 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 yeah VHS. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was buying all of that, you know, um, watching all the NBA games, Slam magazines, um, and yeah, I just kind of became obsessed with it, you know, the mm. whole culture of basketball, you know. And like I said, I was just that kid with the basketball, you know. It's funny because I, I saw someone on the weekend that's from my, my area, a yeah. friend, and he was like, I remember when we used to try and pressure you to play football. Yeah, and yeah. And you just weren't, I wouldn't budge, you know what I'm saying? I just had my ball, you know, I'll go off, do my own thing, you know. Um, yeah, I, I just became obsessed, man. And then obviously yeah. I, I joined with some Top Cats and it just went to another level. Yeah, man. And and, and Top Cats, like, explain for people that don't know, like, in terms of the, the type of team and community that was, because it wasn't just a basketball team, yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? They, yeah. they took people... Um, or as I say, children from disadvantaged backgrounds yeah. and really turned them into something. So just explain the environment that you went into when you joined Top Cats. You know, um, I remember the first day that I went there um, and I'm not sure, obviously I'm sure you, you know, I've watched Tom and Jerry. Yeah, yeah, You know the, yeah. um, the mum and you never see her face. Yeah. That's how I felt like Jimmy Rogers was. Like I walked in with my dad and his voice was like, was, it was crazy, like I, I, was, I was shook. Mm. It was just like this echoing, like, soul-piercing voice. And I, I had my head down the whole time, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, my dad's speaking to him and he's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. But I'm ob observing the court, you know, there's like kids that are five, kids that can barely walk. And yeah. there's men on this side, women over there, you know. It was just like a, it was like controlled chaos, <laughs> you know. Um, and yeah, just walking into that and seeing the atmosphere, seeing the, the ambience, the energy, you know, the way he was motivating people, pushing them. It was just like, yeah, you know, I, I want to be a part of this. Um, yeah. And yeah, man, they, you know, they welcome me with open arms. And it's hard to um, explain it to people that don't know. But mm. like you said, it's much bigger than just basketball. You know, Jimmy used to always say no child gets turned away. You know, whether you're, you know, whether you've got one leg, whether you're dyslexic, Down syndrome, woman, man, yellow, purple, he's treating you the same way. He's holding you accountable. He's making sure you make your time with your sprints, making sure you're on time, you know, discipline. Everyone gets it, you know yeah. what I mean? Almost like a, a military kind of style. Okay. Um, and yeah, man, the older kids looked out for the younger kids. It was just a, a, a big family, man, a big, big family. It's still a family to this day, you know, yeah. all the alumni come back, you know, it's very, very tight-knit. People from the 80s, linked with people from the 90s, early 2000s. Um, and to me, there's nothing like it in the UK. You know, okay. All the other clubs, they either fold or they, you know, they fizzle out. But us, you know, we just we hold strong. You know? Yeah, man. No, that's, that's a good look, and you know, still going to this day. So, yeah. you know, check it out, man. Trust. Even if um, you know, you're a young kid or you're, you're um, a father that's got a young kid that's interested in basketball. Definitely, definitely. Pushing top cats for sure, definitely. man. Um, I want to fast forward um, to your teenage years. Um, I saw, I saw your your, your conversation with Chizo. Shouts out to Chizo, um, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, man, the, the, the first time you went to States is an interesting story, man. Um, so, yeah, for those that don't know, explain, <laughs> explain that, that process. Because, yeah, man, that was, a, that was an interesting um, one. I'll, try, I'll try, and, try and simplify it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I got a scholarship to a school in Virginia. Mm. It was called Notre Dame Academy at the time. Um, and the coach kind of, like, sold us a dream, you know. Um, he said, oh, yeah, you know, you have your own room. You know, big house. I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, the American movies where they have the white picket fence. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was <laughs> just like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I was like excited, you know. We checked the school brochure, everything looked legit. Um, then I flew to, um, well, 16, yeah, I flew to Washington DC airport. And I came out of arrivals. And the moment I saw him, I knew I was done. <laughs> what, like, the, the, the coach? The coach, yeah. yeah. Like, the moment I saw the coach, I just, you know, your spirit don't take to someone. You just know, like, it's about to be a mad, a yeah. mad experience. Um, and then we drove to the school like an hour and a half. We, did, we didn't say one word to each other. Not one word? Not one word. And mm -hmm. just, just imagine, I'm a 16-year-old kid coming from London, first time, you know, traveling by myself, coming to a foreign country, and you don't say, you know, you don't answer my flight words, you don't answer, oh, you hungry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just yeah. silent. So obviously my kind of street instincts kick in. I'm thinking, okay, I'm out to do this man something, or I'm out to jump <laughs> out on the highway, you know. I'm thinking, I'm thinking survival now, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Um, so, <laughs> so, like, we get to the school, I train, and then like, we're, we're about to shower and stuff. So I asked the Americans, I'm like, oh, you know, you know, where do you guys stay? They're like, oh, I stay here, I stay there. 
So they're like, oh, who's staying with the, uh, the coach? So as soon as I said the coach, everyone was like, oh, shit. Like, everyone started, <laughs> like, oh. So I'm like, so now I'm panicking. I'm like, yo, like, yeah. oh, what's this? They're like, don't worry, you'll see, you'll see. I'm like, okay. We're driving, we're driving, we're driving. I see a sign saying, thank you for visiting Virginia. I'm like, huh? So we're crossing state line. Like, mm. we're proper, like, leaving the state far, driving to West Virginia. Driving, driving, driving. As we're going further and further, the houses are getting worse and worse and worse. So I'm just sitting there, I'm like, yo, Jay, like, what have you got yourself into? Because mm. obviously, now I'm thinking, I'm, I'm regretting even coming to America. We get to the house, and it's like a trailer park. Like, you know, like, eight mile, like, where you <laughs> proper, like, wow. Confederate flags, and it's just like, proper, you know? Mm -mm. And I'm just like, man. And then from there, it just kind of like got worse, you know? Like, the coach was a bit of a creep, and, you know, he was just doing little sly stuff, and then obviously he knew that from my energy that I, I didn't like him, you know? Mm. He was calling the scout, like, oh, what's wrong with Justin? He doesn't say anything, you know, he doesn't say hi, or, because I, I was just on like defense, yeah, yeah, defense yeah. mechanism, you know, just getting ready for anything to happen, you know? Um, and a few incidents happened, and it was like, you know what, it's time to get out. Yeah. It's time to get out. It was just it was unbearable, man. And we had two other kids, two from Hungary and another kid from Manchester, you know, and it was just, yeah, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. I can laugh now. Yeah, yeah. When I look back, but at the time, I was just like, yo, like, I can't do this, you know? Yeah. It was just crazy. And I'm someone that, I'm low maintenance, super mm. low maintenance, you know? Like, I, I, will, I will rough it out, but yeah. yeah, the whole vibe of that was just a bit, a bit, a bit creepy, man. Yeah, yeah. A bit so, creepy. So, how, did, how long did you stay there before you decided to come back to the UK? I was there from like end of September until like December. Okay. So I told them, oh, yeah, I'm going for Christmas and come back. Obviously, I ain't coming back. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I just went home and then they just changed schools, yeah. yeah. I, I got another school in the States and then, yeah, I kind of yeah, started man. my journey. I was, I was going to touch on that and, and correct me if I'm wrong, the other school you're talking about is Blair. Well, before Blair, yeah. I went to a school called South Kent. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, um, one of my former uh, teammates from Brixton Top Cats, mm. uh, Matthew Bryan, I mean, and he was at South Kent. So he spoke to his coach and hooked it up and I was there from like January to June. Right, right. And then I, I, I did two, two more years at Blair, okay. Blair Academy, yeah. Okay, man. Um, and then, um, yeah, I, I was going to touch on Blair because um, I think I saw somewhere that um, Luau Deng, who, you know what I mean, is probably one of the the, the biggest UK-based basketball players that's gone over to the NBA sure, and sure. still doing it big. Um, and, you know what I mean, Chicago Bulls, Lakers, Minnesota. Um, but he actually sort of helped you get into Blair, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's funny because... I was originally supposed to go to Blair like okay. from the start. Um, and then I think we was training at, at Brixton Rec and he approached me like, oh, like, you know, have you got a school yet? So I'm like, oh yeah, I've got a school already. So he's like, okay, cool, like, you're, you're sorted, innit? Mm. So then obviously now when this whole madness has happened, he's um, reached out to, to, to the coach and to the headmaster. Like, yo, I've got this kid from London, you know, he's talented, we need to get him in the school. And I got in the school, the school started, <laughs> The school, the school started end of August. He told them like three days before. Okay. And like there was no more spaces, none of that. And he just told them that they just sorted out everything. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and he was always there. Like anything I needed, you know, we'd, we'd go to Chicago for his house, Thanksgiving, you know. Um, he's, he's, he's always been there. He's always supported, man. He's always, yeah. you know, looked out. So, I mean, again, he, he's a former Brixton top cat in it. So that's, that's like family, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Shouts out to him, man. Cause, yeah, yeah, for sure, said, man, for sure, he's, man. He's, he's definitely, done his thing, yeah, doing yeah, his thing. Trust me. Um, definitely inspiration for, for a lot of people from the UK, man. So shout out to Goal, man. Um, let me fast forward to um, Ryder Bronx. Is it Ryder Bronx in the uh, New Jersey? Ryder University. Ryder, yeah, Ryder yeah. University. Um, and that, bro, like, I watched, um, there's, a, there's a show on Netflix, which is, it's, it's like an all or nothing thing, but mm. it's based on college okay. basketball. Yeah, yeah. And I know it's no joke over there. <laughs> college basketball is no yes, joke. Yes. So when you got there, explain sort of the, the levels that you were seeing, because you're playing in, in front of, you know, 10, 15,000 mm -hmm. like stadiums, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so, um, you know, each level you go up is a jump or mm. there's a, a difference or like a shock factor when you get there, you know, like you, you don't ever really expect it to be the way it is, you know. Before you get there, like, yeah, you know, when I get there, I'm going to do this and do that. But then, obviously, I'm a 18, 19-year-old kid, and there's full-grown men that are 21, 22, already, you know, 
I, I'm a freshman and they're junior seniors, so mm. they're they're way ahead of you in terms of maturity, IQ, um, just experience in in general. You know, um, I think the biggest thing for me was like the speed of the game. Yeah, yeah. Like, because I'm someone that's always been quick, always been athletic, but when you get there, it just takes a whole another jump. You know, mm. um, guys are more physical. You know, guys are more smart and that street wise. Uh, yeah, yeah, witty. You yeah. know, like small little tricks that you might not know. You know, as a more mature player. They've been doing it for years, you know, so you really got to adjust quick, you know. And it didn't take me long, but the first couple of games was like, whoa, you know, like, is this for me? You know, there's some games, there's one game that I cried. Yeah, enough. like, I'm like, rah, like, after we lost, I'm like, it's my fault, yeah. I'll blame yourself, and I'm a sore loser anyway, mm. you know. Um, but yeah, I, I adjusted quick, man. It, it, it's either a fight or, fl- I mean, it's either a fight or flight, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah, man, yeah. Yeah, and like the Americans in general, their mentality is all or nothing anyway. Much, much different. You know I mean, it's yeah. much more different. Like, they don't really celebrate second place. They're very much about, you know, first place or nothing. You know what I mean? And I think for me, that's like being in, in the UK, being a under 18 player, under 18, well, I left when I was 16, so under 16, but someone that was 15, 16 playing in the men's division, playing under 18s, I always had a reputation. So mm. people kind of, tread lightly with you, you know, they're cautious with how they guard you, you know, they might not full court press you, yeah. you know, they might be scared to guard you or, you know, intimidated in general where, like you said, in America, no one cares. No one cares. Okay, they're Michael Jordan, they're coming for you, you know, they're coming <laughs> for your spot. And it's just a different mentality, you know, over here, oh, you know, they, they say it's not about winning, it's about taking part. Mm. Where America, from five years old, the family's at the games, cheerleaders, they got signs, like, you need to win. Yeah. And it's win or nothing, you know, so... Yeah, man, it's no joke over there. It's no joke, man. Um, I want to touch back on on your story, um, you know, back on it. Um, but I want to, you know, go in a different direction and talk about just things I want to understand, if I'm honest with you, and probably from people from the UK want to understand. Um, and one of the key things is the draft system. The NBA draft? Yeah, the okay. NBA draft system. Because, like, from a football perspective, we're used to, you know what I mean? Go just signing. Yeah, 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 just signing. Yeah. But in, in the States, it's a bit different. It's like you're, you're signed to a college and then like you're given it. Is it a rank? How does it work? Um, so what happens is, obviously, not everyone goes to college, though. Okay. So some guys make the jump or some guys go to Europe for a year and then they go to the NBA. But usually they're in college um, and obviously teams have their rankings and, you know, five-star recruits, four-star recruits come into college. So they're, they're given scholarships from high school to university. Mm. Um, and then, obviously, based on the year, based on your rep, based on your school, you know, you're given a ranking. So the NBA, the top, I believe it's top 14 picks is the lottery picks. Okay. They're like the creme de la creme, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and then in the process of the draft, before the draft, you work out. So you might have like a one-on-one workout with the team, you know, just you and the team. Or you might have a small group workout. You might have a 10-man workout. and the scouts are just sitting on the side, just watching you, you know. Um, and yeah, and then all of that kind of put together, you know, I think they do like interviews and stuff. Um, you, you know, they want to see your character. You know, they might even call your school teachers. Okay. Yeah, like it's proper deep with some teams, you know. Okay. They wanna, you got to think these people are investing millions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they got to do their background check. They got to run the file. You know, there's so many things. It's so much bigger than just basketball, yeah. you know. Um, and then, yeah, on the draft day, they... they you know, they make their selections and, you know, I think the money got, yeah, so the first people get the most money, then it yeah. kind of just goes down. And the first round is 30 picks. So those contracts are guaranteed. Okay. The next round, the second round is another 30 picks, but they're not guaranteed contracts, non-guaranteed. Right. So you have to pretty much prove yourself in training camp or in the NBA, um, what's it called, uh, Summer League. So like a trial period before they give you the yeah, actual that actual contract, you know right, I mean? right, so right. You're like on edge all the time. Okay. You know they could cut you, you know, within a week or a few days, you know. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, man. No, that's good information, man. Because <laughs> you know, I said again, referencing football, we're used to, you know, what I mean, see a player sign yeah, yeah, quickly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no, that's I mean, good information. To be honest, though, some players do sign as free agents. So let's say a player doesn't get drafted, he can sign as a free agent after the draft. Okay. He can go into training camp, impress people. They say, oh, we want to sign you. We want to sign you to a two-year deal. Or, right, so, right. so he's not a part of the draft because he didn't get drafted. You know, so, oh, okay. But he, he, he's still on a rookie contract, but he's just not a drafted player. Like yeah. associated to like a... Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Makes sense, makes sense, man. Um, when we talk basketball as well, like I, I think people, obviously, NBA is like the, the biggest thing. 
Um, and then obviously being from the UK, we're, we're rare the BBL. Um, but Europe's got a big basketball scene as well, man. And um, I, I know you spent some time mm -hmm. on, on the road in Europe and, yeah, and played yeah, for yeah. different teams. How was it in terms of the culture? How was it different for you? Ooh, um, Europe was great, man. Yeah. Europe was great, honestly. Um, had a few places that was, was rough, you know. Played in Ukraine for a year. Okay. Rough, you know, <laughs> proper like Soviet <laughs> Union. Yeah, man. Cold. Um, they were paying us like they were like two, three months behind of our money. Mm -mm. Um, it was just a whole, the whole aura of the country was just a bit off, you know. Yeah. Like you didn't really feel safe, you yeah. know, in that sense. Um, but played in some great places like Hungary for a year, three years in Greece, spent some time in France, um, a year in Cyprus, Sweden, and it just the difference is like they love it. Mm. Like when I mean they're passionate. Like for example, Greece. They are so passionate, like, you have to, like, at a game, it could be life or death. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, you know, they, they have flares, they, you know, they're throwing stuff, like, they're proper just, they're just passionate, man. Like, kind of like football hooligans kind of thing, yeah, you know, yeah. like, they, if you're with them, they love you, you know, they see you around the town, ah, oh, Robinson, hey, you know, they, they come and ask, sign autographs, take pictures with their kids, you know, that like they really, really embrace you. And it's, it's a shame that we don't get the same love in the UK, you know. Yeah. Um, Obviously, you know, we've got football to contend with, mm. rugby or cricket. But, you know, in those countries, like, it's just part of their culture, man. Part of their culture. There's basketball courts everywhere, indoor courts, kids coming in, playing for free, you know, where here, kids got to book the court or you got to pay for this. You know. So it's different, man. It's different. It's, 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 it's definitely a different experience. But I feel like there's nowhere like home, you know. Yeah, so yeah. all those years that I'm on the road, you know, playing this country, that country, you always want to come home and play in your home country in front yeah. of your family, your friends, and just be home, you know, just build a base and just have a foundation. Yeah, man. Know? I even, speaking of Greece, I think J. Cole done a, okay. done, yeah, done, <laughs> done a season out in Greece, I think, recently. Okay. He done, he done his thing, yeah. so he's, he's out there doing his thing. Um, but yeah, speaking about coming home, man, obviously London Lions is, is a big part of your story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, obviously, captain was captain there and, you know what I mean, led them to, to, to numerous playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, when, when did you first join London Lions? Um, I joined them in the 2017-2018 season. Okay. Yeah. Um, for me, it was the year before I had been approached by a few teams in the BBL, um, mm -hmm. but the money just wasn't right. This was, the situation just wasn't right. Um, and then the owner or the former owner, uh, mm -hmm. Vince McCauley, he's also from Brixton Top Cats. So he's okay. come from Judy Rogers, you know. So there's a, a level of trust there already, you know, and you know, we knew each other already. Um, it was actually a late coach called uh, Andrea Norton. Okay. Yeah, she was the one that actually approached me and Vince. So she kind of like made the link between us. Mm. She was like, oh, you know, like, what do you think about coming, coming to play back in the UK? At first I was a bit, uh, you know, because <laughs> I, was, I was doing well in Europe. So I was yeah. like, and then the money was more. But then my son was two and then my girlfriend was pregnant at the time. Right, right. So I'm just like, you know, it's too much to be on the road. My son's crying at the airport and I'm leaving, you know. It's just, yeah. it, it's, it's too much, you know. I, I had been away from everyone from the yeah. age of 16. Yeah. I was just tired of moving all the time, you know. Being uprooted each time I get comfortable, I've got to leave after the end of the summer. It's just, it was too much. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, Vince, you know, arranged a meeting, we sat down and, you know, he, he came correct, you know. Mm. Um, he's someone that I hold dear in my heart, you know. He, he, He's always kept his promise with whatever he said he's gonna do. He did it, yeah. you know, and which is know. rare in sports. Man. Um, yeah, it's rare yeah, in yeah, sports. yeah. And you know, like he, he took care of me. He took care of me, you know. And we had a lot of success, you know, yeah. won championships, won cup titles, trophy titles, and you know, we, we made history, you know. So he's he's someone that I have to thank because he brought me back in the peak of my career, you know. Mm -hmm. And I I trusted his word, and he didn't steer me wrong. Yeah, you know? and it worked out for both of us. Yeah, man. And I just want to touch on because, like, being a professional athlete, um, a lot of people don't understand the sacrifice, man. Like, you, you mentioned that, you know what I mean, your son is two, mm. your girl was pregnant at the time, you're on the road, you know. That, that must have been taxing on you emotionally to yeah. pursue your dream, but also as well, you know, you've got a family, man. Yeah, so that, yeah. that sacrifice you've got For to make sure. as, a, as an athlete, you know what I mean? So it's tough, man. It's tough. Yeah, it's, 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 tough. it's a lot, man. And I think people just think, oh, you just get up and play, you know, but... You know, when you're away from your family for nine months, you know, you don't mm. see no one in your... A lot of the times, you know, us athletes, we're, we're by ourselves. Yeah. We're by ourselves in, in a country that we don't speak the language, we don't know no one. It's, it's literally 
training home. Mm. You know, might might watch TV a little bit, but then you're just by I yourself. Can't even, I can't even understand the, the language of the yeah, TV. Yeah, like <laughs> you're by yourself, you're isolated, you know, and you, so sometimes you get deep into your thoughts and think, is this worth it? You know, yeah, but yeah. your friends are back, you know, they got their family, their, their kids, their parents are there, you know, you're missing weddings, yeah. birthdays, births, you know, like funerals, like there's so many things that you miss and you sacrifice because of what you love and, you know, you, your, your profession. So yeah. it's a lot, man. It's a lot, it's a lot. Um, let me bring you back to, to, to London Lions, man. And, um, you know, uh, a, a link up with someone that we know in the UK for different reasons, but, you know, he, he's a baller. Um, at heart is Ovi, Ovi Soko, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, you know you played with him. Mm. Um, how was it playing with him you know, for, for the London Lions? Well, that was my second time playing with Ovi. Okay, yeah, we played together in Greece my my second year right. in a place called Trickler. and you know that was one of the funniest. <laughs> like that year was just everyone on the team was just on the same wavelength. Mm. Like the team, even down to like the Greek players. It was just like a selfless team. Like it's, I've probably been on like two teams in eleven years, maybe three teams that were just selfless. Mm. You know, like no one cared about scoring. Every man was just on smoke, defensively, offensively. Everyone bought into the coach. You know, there was no like egos. Yeah, no egos. And if there was egos, everyone had an understanding that we kind of checked that person and you know put it behind us. Mm. Um, and we just had a bunch of good guys, man. You know. I'll name some of them. We had uh, Demetrius Conga, mm. he's from Brooklyn, um, went to St. Bonaventures, Junior Kadugan from Toronto, uh, Gene Teague, um, Brandon Brown, who else? Regia. Yeah, we had a bunch of guys, man, a bunch of yeah, guys yeah. that were just good, good people, you know, and our chemistry on the court was the same off the court, you know. Yes, we'd go, we'd go. go out together, our partners were all cool together, you know, they were going on their little girl trips and, you know, yeah, man, it was a... Like, that was one of the best years, you know, and yeah. that brought me and Ovi closer as well, you know, like, we were already cool, but that brought us closer, because obviously two guys from London, we can relate to each other, you know, I'm there with my family, sometimes you'll come over, eat mm. some food, you know, like, like, we proper bonded, you know, yeah. um, and then, again, play together again at, at Lions, and it, it was just, I don't think too much of it, you know, to yeah. me, it's just Ovi, obviously, everyone sees him as the... You know, Love Island star, but yeah. I just see him as Obi. Like when he calls me, we, we just talk about life and normal stuff. You know, so yeah, yeah man. That that eighteen nineteen season though, people were saying Ooh. that used the best duo in the BBL. So no, no, that yeah. was um, what year was that? That was, that was that was right before lockdown. No, was it before lockdown? Yeah, that was right before lockdown. So, so that was nineteen twenty. Yeah, nineteen twenty. Yeah. That's that's what the streets yeah. were saying. You know what I mean? <laughs> you were saying you're the best. You're the best in the BBL. So, yeah, yeah. did you did you did you feel that? Did you get that feedback from when like you was traveling around the country and? Um, not really. No, I'm I, I'm I'm kind of a. I don't really pay too much mind to that kind of stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, obviously in my head I I knew that. Yeah. I already thought I was the best player in the league at that time. You yeah. know. So when he came on board, it was like, alright, cool. Like this is someone that he knows my game. I know his game, and we can just feed off each other. You know. Mm. Um. Yeah, it, it was just a, a, a natural connection again, you know, it was just like brothers reconnecting again and we just picked up from where we left off, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah it, it, it was sick, man. It was yeah. sick. Um, I know sports banter. I used to play football back in the day. And I know when you heard he was going on Love Island, you must have sent him a few cheeky texts or he must have got a bit of banter. Like, what was that like in, do you know what I mean, when you linked up? And... You, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, it was funny because... You know, before they go into the house, they yeah. like lock off everyone, innit? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you don't actually know that they go into the house. So I didn't know until I saw him on the TV. <laughs> I'm like, rah, like, I'm sitting, I'm sitting there watching my girl. I'm like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> so then obviously, you know, you, you see him interacting. I was just happy that he, he didn't compromise his integrity, you yeah, know. He represented. He stuck sure. to who he was, you know. He, he didn't do no madness on there and, and make us all embarrassed or, you yeah. know. Um, so yeah, like when he came out, you know, it was more like just, I don't know. And, and again, it's like, we don't really talk about the hypey, hypey kind of stuff. It's yeah, more yeah. like just life, you know. So it's more like asking, like, oh, yeah, like, what was this guy like? Or what was that guy like? Or or asking him about certain situations, you know, that happened. Or, you know, like, I think he had an argument with that girl, Anna or something. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. And I said, I'm tired. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> said, I'm tired. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired. The situation like that just, you know, busting joke about that and all that kind of stuff. Like, that's it really, you know. Yeah. Shout I, I was just proud that he was able to like capitalize off of the opportunities that 
you know, when yeah. he came out of the house, you know, and I feel like he's he's like one of the few winners of Love Island, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's, yeah, definitely. Yeah, man, definitely. crowd favourite, you know, the ladies loved him. Everyone was just impressed how he conducted himself, you know, yeah. so he made us proud, man. He made yeah. us proud. And shout out to Ovi, man. Yeah, he's definitely big doing up to his thing man. and, um, yeah, go on, mate, continue, man. Definitely, and definitely. Just a disclaimer, like, for, for those of you, when we're talking BBL, we're not talking Brazilian butt lift, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're talking the British basketball league. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Pause. You know what I mean? Just want to make sure, get that clear. You know what I mean? I don't want people to think we're talking about Brazilian bum lift. You get me? Guys are in there. Getting excited, yeah, man. getting excited. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, just 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 to clarify for the viewers out there. Um but yeah, man, um moving forward and you know, you touched on it um around sort of the opportunities in in in, in the UK when it comes to basketball. Um obviously the in the NBA, it's not even the NBA, but in America, basketball is highly regarded at every level for when sure, we're talking sure, grassroots sure. right up to the NBA. Um, and where does the UK need to get to to get to that point? Um, I know I read that, you know, there is more funding going into the basketball. Yeah. Um, basketball is probably one of the, the diverse sports in the UK. It is the most, most, uh, most yeah, diverse, sport, diverse yeah. sport in the UK. Um, but you, you, you've you experienced both sides. You know what I mean? You've, you've been to America. You've played yeah, yeah. Um, in the UK. You know, what's missing in terms of getting the UK to that point? Hmm. Um... I think first is a, a mentality shift, mm. you know. Um, Americans want to be the best at everything, you know. Like, you even see now they're, they're like some of the best in football. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I think first is a mentality shift, you know. I think um, the government or the governing bodies, you know, they have to like just embrace basketball, man. Like, it's, it's, it's the second most participated sport in the country, you know. So. Mm. You know, they always come up with these excuses and, oh, yeah, we don't win medals and stuff. But for me, I, I think there's a racial undertone. You know, I think obviously it's a city that's, it's, it's, it's a sport that's played in, in the city mostly by, you know, black kids. Mm. I'm, I'm not going to say, you know, B A M E, whatever they call it. Yeah, you know? BAME, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's mostly played by black kids. Um, and to me, I think that's why they're not, they're not funding it as, as they should be, you know. Um, Whereas, you know, you see other sports that don't win nothing. Water polo, yeah. all this, and they get millions. Yeah, they get millions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. and we have to, like, scrape and... It's, it's just ridiculous, you know. Um, especially with, you know, the likes of Luau, Den, Puffman, Sabonsu, Joe Freeland, all these guys that have made the NBA. Done really well as well. You know, man. like, why wouldn't you just fund it? And, you know, I feel like when, when you fund a sport, it should trickle down and it should help, you know, start from the grassroots and, you know, start from the kids in the schools and after school clubs and you know, build it organically, you know, domestically from the ground up. Mm. And that's going to benefit, you know. In other countries, that's what they do. You know, in Greece, they start from young. You know, they get top coaching, you know, former players or current players, they come back, you know, they speak to them, they inspire them. And in this country, there doesn't seem to be that push, you know, for basketball. Mm. Whatever the reason may be, I mean, I have my own opinion on why it's like that. Um, I think facilities have to get better, yeah. you know. Forget America, speak about Europe, other countries. You go to France, Greece, Spain, and there's gyms everywhere. Mm. Like top flight gyms, you know, and they're all linked with the football clubs. Okay. You know, so it's like facilities, like, like over here, we got to compete with badminton. Yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, there's no, I, I, there's probably one gym in this country that is, specifically for basketball, just basketball, maybe two. Mm. I think the Amici Center, it, if it's still, is it still up? They might have knocked it down, but mm. maybe like one or two gyms in the whole country that is just for basketball. You go to Spain, France, everywhere. Mm. A kid can just walk in and play, work out, train, you know. In America, that's a standard, yeah, you know, yeah. open gyms and high school gyms and, you know, um, and then grassroots, you know, there, there, there has to be some investment into grassroots, you know. Yeah. Forget basketball, you're keeping kids off the street. You know? Definitely. You know, you're giving them a, a safe space, you know, you're teaching them life skills, you know, you're teaching them how to work in a team concept, communication, everything. Like, sport in itself just benefits kids overall, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, I mean, I could go on all day, but for me, those are like the, the three main main components. Yeah, right? man, and you go, man, like it's, um, it's one of those ones where until they see some sort of benefit in it for themselves yep, yep. then they ain't really going to pay attention um but i know you're you're obviously very vocal but very active as well 
um, you know, off camera was talking about the, the drive that you're doing where kids are getting free meals mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. talk a bit about, well, more about that, man, because I don't think um, that side of things that athletes do um, in terms of the light doesn't get shined on as much. So, yeah, so, so talk sure. about that, that drive, man, and yeah, mean, what, so, what you're doing for um, the kids. What we're doing this, this summer is, um, it's one of my, like, one of my big brothers, he's, uh, he's got a team called Surrey Rams and he's like, he's the head of it, but I'm just like kind of leading the project kind mm. of thing. It's called the Half Programme and it's in Merton in Croydon where we have a, a multi-sport camp all free. You know, kids come for free. Um, you know, we teach them basketball, football, all kinds of sports. You know, we've got outdoor space um, and in us teaching them basketball, we're, we're, we're also, we bring in en enrichment. Mm. So it could be a first aider, someone coming with animals, a PT, you know, all, all kind of things, you know, like th just kind of exposing them to things that they've never seen before. Um, and then we've got some top level coaches, you know, we've got former GB guys that are coaching, you know, we've got, um, there's one guy that's, that's a PT teacher at the school that we're, we're coaching, you know, so okay. he's familiar with all, most of the kids. Um, and yeah, man, we just, you know, we give them free, free, free lunches. And like I said before, you know, like, Maybe some of the kids, that's their only meal for the day. Yeah, definitely, you know? definitely. And it's just, for, for me, it's, it's something special because they're, in, you know, they're, they're in our space, they're safe, they're not on the roads, you know, they're not even at home. Who knows what they're going through at home, you know? Mm -hmm. For us, that's like, we know that that's their safe haven. They come in, you know, we speak life into them, we make sure they come out of their shell. You know, there's kids that, when they first came, they're timid and quiet. We see them, yo! Morning, what are you saying? Yeah, Come yeah. here, man. Yeah. You, know, talk to, you know, like, you got to speak life in the kids and give them confidence, you know? Um, so, yeah, man, like, it, it, there's so many things that we're doing, you know, that I feel like, you know, that is my passion, you know? Mm. In terms of, obviously, there's basketball, but I feel like my, my bigger purpose, sorry, my bigger purpose is just to impact kids, mm. you know? Um, and, and that's something that I, it's funny, because I, I was telling my friend, like, on the first day, I got emotional, like, as I sat down and I watched the kids like eating the food, I got emotional. I'm just like, yo, like these kids are safe. They, they're here with us. They're eating food. Mm -hmm. You know, they're learning life skills. We're holding them accountable. We're disciplining them. Where you know they're having fun. Like they're competing. There's, there's so many things that kind of just, you know, came into my brain, and then I just got emotional. It's like, yo, like this is what I want to do. You know, like I want to help these kids, and any way I can, I want to do that. You know, um, yeah. I'm even launching my own foundation. You know. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, we we going into schools, you know, doing like one-on-one -on -one mentoring after school club, basketball sessions, small groups, assembly talk, all, 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 all kind of things, you know. Yeah. Um, just trying to use my, my own expertise and life experience to kind of help navigate them through life, you know. Um, so, yeah, man, that's, it's, it's something that I love and I've been doing it for free for so long, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. it's not a thing where I might as well start doing it now for myself, you mm. know what I'm saying, in terms of reaching out and, you know, forming partnerships with different local organisations, you know, that's something that I've been doing in my sleep, so yeah. I might as well formalise it, you know, I've got my, my foundation uh, up and running, it's, a, it's um, CIC uh, registered, my directors, you know, all, all that stuff, logo, yeah. website, um, so yeah man, you know, like, when it's ready to launch, you know, you guys will see it. Yeah, definitely, man. And, and you know, um, when it's ready to launch, definitely let us know. We'll definitely big that up. And, Thank you, man. You know, definitely want to give you your props, man. Do you know what I mean? Thank like, you. Um, you know, for giving back to the kids. Um, it's not um, it's not c common for people to get to the level that you've got to yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and reach back and, and bring people. You know what I mean? Especially kids, man. So big up yourself. Thank you, man. Definitely want to give you your flowers for that, for sure, Thank man. Thank you, man. Um, now, you, you talked about your, your life experiences. Uh, you must have seen a load of stuff, um, but from a professional standpoint, you know, getting into you know professional basketball, um, you know your commodities. So you must have seen agents trying to you know <laughs> suck off you, or you know different people trying to approach you or trying to get money off you. Like uh, like, how do you navigate that, man? Like for the next young boy that's coming through, man. Like, what advice would you give to the, to to that person? Um, how I never, I'm I'm just I don't know. I guess I'm just clued up, man. In terms of like trying to navigate all of that, I was lucky to have older guys, you know, whether that's from top cats, you know, guys that I played professionally, gone to America, or guys, you know, that I was around with the GB team, you know. I was kind of privy to a lot of stuff before I even turned pro, mm. you know. So I kind of had on, you know, my radar goggles, like, okay, 
this guy, this guy's a fraud or this guy's trying. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I was very sharp in, in, in terms of kind of catching out who's who, you know. Um, and that's what I always tell like, the younger ballers. And if people saw how many young kids hit me up about contracts, what school to go to, you know, dealing with an agent, like people would be amazed. Like mm. I, I get messages all the time, yo, Jay, can you read this for me? Or yo, let me know, can you contact this guy? You know, and that's stuff that I'm, I'm doing for free. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Don't, I, don't, like, I don't need money to help. You know, like these are like my little brothers or, you know, these kids are young, young enough to be my, my kids. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, so for me, I would just say, you know, for a younger kid that's trying to navigate the agents and the, you know, the sponges and this stuff, just reach out to people that have been there before, you know. Mm. Um, that's, when I was young, I didn't have no shame. I reached out to so-and-so, yo, what, what should I do here? Or yo, he said this, what should I say, you know. Um, and a lot of them do, most of them do, you know, they reach out to me or whoever it may be, you know. Because for me, that's the only way, you know, you, you can learn from someone that's been in your shoes and that's walked your path, you know. Um, mm. So, yeah, any young guys, you know, if you need help, I'm here, man, you know. Yeah, so. man, definitely, man, definitely. And we'll, we'll plug, obviously, your contact details, you know what I mean? Just make sure people reach out, for sure. Um, Listen, man, we're coming to the end of the conversation. You know, I can't, I can't not have you here and ask about a couple of, a couple of things that's been on my mind. Yeah. So, so the first one is, who's the best player, in your opinion, that you've ever played against? Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Um, I'm going to give you two. Okay. I can't give you one because I can't decide out of them. Um, the first one is John Wall. Okay. I don't, I don't know if you know who that is. Nah. John Wall, he is currently, he played about 10 years with the Washington Wizards. Okay. I think he's with the Clippers now. Right. And this is when I was in college though, I was in university, and he went to Kentucky. And we went to Kentucky to play like 25,000 people. Like, you couldn't even hear the ball bounce. Mm -mm. That's how loud it was. Like, you couldn't even hear your own voice. Um, and he was a freshman, I was a junior, so I'm mm -hmm. two years above him. He was like the number one player in the nation, was projected to be the first pick in the draft. Boy, it was <laughs> ugly, man. It was listen, it, it was mad. Like I never seen I never seen someone first of all, he's six four, long arms, broad shoulders, like a forty inch vertical, like but I never seen someone be able to move so quick, chain direction but not slow down. Mm. Like be able to control their body like that. It was it was mad. Like he he would run right at you and then Chain direction, but still going the same speed. Yeah. Most guys they will slow down and then change. You yeah. know. Um, yeah. I mean, we couldn't do nothing with him, man. Mm -mm. Couldn't do nothing. Like once he got the ball in the open court, hope it, and it break. Was like you tried <laughs> to foul him, you do some madness in this. Yeah. yeah. It was crazy. The first play was like a, a um, an alley -oop. He caught, it, reversed it on us. Like the first mm -mm. opening play, like they, they drew up like a special timeout play. Boom, 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 boom. Someone said threw it. I just looked. We just looked up. <laughs> <laughs> you see, man, yeah, it, was, it was crazy, man. Um, uh, John he, Wall. Yeah, he was like, he was, he was like, for me, it's rare that someone wows me. Okay. He was like, wow, like, this guy is sick. Mm. Um, and then the second guy was a guy called Bo McCaleb. Okay. Um, he was an American guy. And all the GB guys would, would know who I'm talking about. They know exactly who this guy is. Yeah. Um, American guy, but he's playing for the Macedonian national team. Okay. So the night before, so they had two American point guards. They had a guy called Marcus Green and Bo McCaleb. Mm. And Marcus Green had played majority of all the games. So on all the scout reports, we're seeing Marcus Green, Marcus Green, Marcus Green. They're like, okay, we've got to do this, do that. And there was one last player on the scout report said Bo McCaleb. All it said was driver, like to drive. Yeah, That's yeah. all it said. There was no like details, nothing. So we're like, oh, this guy's a small boy, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, jolting, man. So we get to the game now. We see Marcus Green sitting down. We see Bo McKayla warming up. We're like, huh? So that kind of threw us off. We're like, rah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like, game starts now. I'm on the bench. I, I didn't start. So my brethren, he, start, he started now. First play, like, he hit him with some, like, some mad move. Like, like I've never seen someone with, like, a, like a burst of speed, like, from point zero and then... Like the burst from point A to point B was ridiculous. Like mm -hmm. it was mad. Like and he was just at his own pace, and it would just change on you. Like so, like everyone tried to guard him. Yeah. So now I've come to the game now. Like some of the men in my like, yo, yo, Jay, take him, take him, take him. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, 
I'm like, so I, I try to guard him now. Hits me with something. <clears throat> gone. I'm like, yo. Then I think like, we had like a timeout. I think like, Luau tried to, Luau was like, no, I got him, I got him. Yeah. Same thing. No, no one could like do anything. And it was like, he was just, yeah, it was crazy, man. He was at his own pace. But when he went, he went like, yeah, he, yeah. there was no stopping him. You know what I mean? Um, and he couldn't even shoot. Like he weren't shooting. No, everything was just like 5'10", but he's like, the rim's here. And he, he's like putting the ball in the rim like this. Mm -mm. Like literally, like, he's jumping over everyone. Just put, like, I'll send you a highlight tape of him. Yeah, like, yeah, man. Like, yeah, man. The this, guy this was guy's... like, headache, like proper headache. <laughs> like, and then we had to go to Macedonia and play them again. It was even worse. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bowman Caleb, man. Like I said, all the GB guys, they'll know who that guy is. Okay, okay. No, man, that's big. That's big. <laughs> um, top three of all time, NBA. Ooh, or uh, wherever you want to go. Tough one, tough <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, man, my son's going to kill me for this one. Like, do you know what? I, I'll, I'll give you mine. Because I know this, I mean, and shouts out to Boosie. Because I'll see, you know, you know Boosie talk about Kobe. <laughs> but I'm going to go Jordan. Kobe, then LeBron. Ooh. The thing is, it's tough because are we basing it on better player or better career? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because Jordan had like a immaculate career. Mm. Ten scoring titles, six, six in, no, not six in a row, but six for six. He didn't lose in the finals. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, yeah. But then LeBron's done it for 20 years. No yeah. one's ever had a prime for 20 years. And then to me, Kobe's skilled, more skilled than both of them. Yeah. So it's like, I would say LeBron because... As LeBron number one, yeah? LeBron number one. Okay. Because he's been doing it for 20 years. Like, he averaged 30 points in his 19th season. Mm. Like, that's, that's, like, that's unheard of. Mm. He's won championships with three different teams. He's about to be the all-time leading scorer of all time. He's going to be top 10 in assists yeah. in 6'9". Like, he's literally shattering every record. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, a lot of it is from longevity. and But in terms of, like, this impact on the game and making teammates better, as well as getting his own, I, I think he's the best ever in terms of doing that. Like, mm. LeBron can take the wackest team and get them to the finals. Jordan can't do that. Kobe can't do that. Mm. He gets the most out of the least. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's a fair some of the teams, man. like, the, there's a team in 2007, Cleveland, that as a 22-year-old, he took to the finals. If yeah. you go and see that roster, yeah, you'd be like, what the hell? You know what I'm Kyrie, saying? Was Kyrie on that team? Kyrie won 2007. Yeah, yeah Kyrie won. Kyrie was in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That, that's how long he's been doing this, yeah, in 2007. Yeah. Wow. That's 15 years ago. You know what I mean? Um, Jordan, of course. To be honest, LeBron, Kobe, Jordan, man. Okay, like, okay. Obviously, when I was young, I was a Jordan fanatic. Mm. But to me, Kobe's a more skilled Jordan. That's mm. why I, 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 obviously, he, he's a... He's a carbon copy of Jordan, but I feel like he's more skilled. And now, if we're talking about career, I mean, factor that in, then I'll say Jordan. Yeah, but yeah. But in terms of players, yeah. Yeah, man. Do you know yeah, what? It's, tough, it's, 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 it's funny you say that because I didn't, obviously, you hear about the foray about Jordan growing up and stuff, and obviously the Jordans and mm -hmm. Jemmy, all the swag. But until I watched The Last Dance, mm -hmm. I didn't really realize the impact. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He had on basketball, like this guy changed the face yeah, of the whole. Yeah. And I think that that's why he's obviously not taken away from his basketball skills, but that's why he's like a larger than life mm. figure because of the shoes. And he, he he came into the league when Magic and Bird, Isaiah Thomas, them man were getting old. Yeah, yeah. So they yeah. were like kind of you know dropping out. Yeah. Now he's he's like on the rise at the perfect time to kind of take over the league, you know. Um, because all the, all them guys were the, they were smashing Jordan. Like, yeah, yeah. Jordan wasn't even a factor to them. You know what I'm saying? But obviously they got old. You know, Matt Johnson had the HIV thing and yeah. Larry Bird <laughs> is, is back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I think things just aligned perfectly for Jordan. You know. But again, you know, he's still great. You know, still yeah. great. Yeah, man. No, that's 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 interesting, man. But it's interesting hearing it from a. Someone that's played the game for us. I'm probably going to get a lot, a, a lot of stick about that. You know, <laughs> especially from my son as well. But, yeah, you know. man. No, that's, that's a good look, man. Um, bro, it's been, it's been an amazing conversation, man. Thanks a lot for being just so open and transparent. Of course, man. Um, you, moving forward, what's next for you, man? Because I know you've been doing some columns. You've been, you know, you've been on some, some Sky Sports. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And obviously doing the NBA stuff. Like, what's next for you? Um, for me, it's just, um, just really like 
tapping into the the community work, you know, the outreach mm. work, the mentorship, um, you know, the after school clubs, the, you know, the one on one sessions, small groups, um, linking up with local organisations. So for me, that's really much, you know, the main thing. Obviously, I'm not playing next season, so mm. I really got the chance to kind of focus on what I want to do. You know, I, I feel like I've got a chance to be a human. You know what I'm saying? Like I told one of my friends the other day, this is my first time being able to breathe. Like, mm. you know, I ain't got to worry about being in shape for preseason or getting ready for this or you know, like now I can just be a human and do what I want to do. And that's not to say that I didn't want to play basketball because of course, you know, that's what I love. But at the same time, I feel like this is going to have a bigger impact than it did as me being a player, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, man. And again, it's helping my community, it's helping people that look like me, that sound like me, they've had my experiences. So that's that's the main thing that I want to do in life, you know? Yeah, man. And look, you know, just just bringing it back, you're not playing next season because you're injured, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got quite a, quite a big injury, yeah, you know what I mean? Definitely, like, definitely. Is, it, is it your you, ligament damage? Yeah, so I, um, I fully ruptured my patella tendon. Mm. Yeah, so it was serious. This happened end of April. Mm. So it's about three months since the surgery now. Um, this, they originally said it was a nine to twelve month um, rehab, but they said it probably will be nine months now. But again, you know, I'm just taking my, my time. You know, mm. I'm, there's no timeline. Okay, you got to be ready by January first. No, you know, when I'm ready, I'm ready. You know, if mm. I'm not ready, then I'm not ready. It, 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 it's as simple as that. You know, mm. and again, it, it's it's a lot of things. Sometimes are blessings in disguise. You know. Um, I really get a chance to, to focus on you know my family, you know my community, doing things that I want to do, and and building something. You know, mm. I, I I can build a legacy with this, and you know again, like I said, hopefully impact thousands of kids. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And you know, but but, but one thing for sure, we we're gonna see you back on the court though, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For sure, for <laughs> you're sure. You're gonna be sure. back you at one me, point. Man. Definitely, no, definitely. Man, that's a good look, man. Where can people follow you? Where can people plug into what you're doing with the community outreach? Yeah. Obviously, when you get back into the court, like, where can people follow you, man? Yeah. So Instagram is really the main one, really, right now. Um, JJ Rob underscore LDN. Um, obviously, the website hasn't gone live yet, so I can't really say that yet. Mm. But that will all be, you know, plugged under the whole Instagram page. Um, you know, we're about to start a, a, another page for the foundation. Um, and yeah, man, obviously, you know, in releasing that, you know, they'll see everything, you know, they'll see the agenda, what I'm trying to do, who I'm trying to reach, um, why I'm doing it, you know, who's inspired me to do it. And th th they'll see everything, all the services, you know, the services that I provide to the schools and the communities and the kids. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Well, bro, big up yourself, as I said before, man, um, you know, amazing career. It's not over yet. For sure, for um, sure. Even, you know, moving into your next phase of, of the community outreach is, is big what you're doing, man. So just wanted to give you a flowers for sure. Thank you, And man. yeah, man, looking it, forward man. to the journey ahead. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Big Thank up, you, man. man. Go. And, you know, oh, damn, I'm, I'm trying to think, but <laughs> I'm trying to think as I'm talking. <laughs>